Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fractal Bitcoin. Welcome. I'm Chris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm Chris. And this is uh, your daily Bitcoin news update. Let's get right to the quick Bitcoin price update. You can see right now we're at $43,813. We've sort of crept up from $42,000, which is good. And yeah, all signs are looking very bullish that we're going to go up. And we're, yeah, that's. That's it. That's all we need to know about the price for now. Let's get to the news items. Thailand will exempt Bitcoin and cryptocurrency transactions from value-added tax in a bid to encourage the development of, of a digital asset hub in the country. Yeah, so here's another example of a country embracing Bitcoin and fostering development, right? This is good. It's really good. And here's a here's an article I'll, I'm going to include. By the way, I include links to everything in the in the description below, just so you know. Uh, but this is the actual article has more details on it. But it's very good news. And of course, Michael Saylor is buying more Bitcoin. And yes, I said of course he is because of course he is. Yeah, in January, MicroStrategy acquired an additional 850 Bitcoin for 37.2 million and now holds 190 thousand Bitcoin. Yeah, so. Yeah, so he's bullish, as usual. Love it. And here's Walker. He had a conversation with um, Samson Mao, and the quote is, everything under $1 million is going to be a rounding error in the future. If you get in at this point, you can be the next superpower of the world. And he's talking about the race for nation states to adopt Bitcoin. So, yeah, I mean... We know Bitcoin's going to go very high, definitely over a million, probably two, three, five million. We don't know. It's going to take a long time. It might take a long time for that to happen, but it's going to happen. And so getting in at 43,000, if nations do that, think of, think of the prosperity that they're going to have in their country. It's a very good point. Fidelity now allocates 1% to spot Bitcoin ETF in their all-in-one conservative ETF. They will all do it. Yes, so this is Fidelity. They have an ETF, all-in-one conservative ETF. Now, this is something when you have an investment account with Fidelity, you can choose where to allocate your money, and one of these places is called the all-in-one conservative ETF. And that's a bunch of different investments put together. But now they're including in that all-in-one conservative ETF, 1% of it is now Bitcoin. Think about that. Think about it. That's huge. It really is. This is a video. Uh, I'm not going to play it because it's, yeah, we don't really have time, but this is early Bitcoin adopter Da Vinci Jeremy. He believes that Satoshi worked for the NSA and his security clearance gave him the knowledge to develop Bitcoin without leaving any back doors for the government. Yeah, he actually goes to describe the different encryption models or something and how... It, it's it's very interesting. And you might think, oh my God, what if the NSA really did create Bitcoin? Doesn't that mean the government's running it and everything? No, actually. <laughs> I mean, look, if the government or the NSA is Satoshi, then yeah, they have a wallet with a million Bitcoin in it. That's worth a considerable amount, but they don't control everything. They don't control Bitcoin. They don't control it. So... Whatever. Even if they did, we don't know who created it, but it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of Bitcoin, right? Okay, now here is Stacey Herbert, of course, uh, wife of Max Kaiser, living in El Salvador. And there's a post here about people getting wrecked in, in uh, Hong Kong. Residents were defrauded for more than $300 million by the crypto exchange JPEX. And she just says very clearly, you know, many individuals like getting wrecked. It's an adrenaline high to lose everything, which explains Macaw and Vegas. But in terms of managing an economy, attracting builders has been the only winning formula formula throughout history. So, yeah, and if you look at economies, the ones that are building and moving forward and flourishing, they're the ones that are flourishing. And when you look at, like, for instance, communist economies, which are uh, going the opposite direction, there's less production, less 
building, they're dying. So, you know, you could look at the currency, you could look at the economy, but one thing to look at is the builders. Is there building and flourishing happening? And in El Salvador, the building and flourishing is off the chart right now. Breaking news, credit card and auto loan delinquencies spiked to their highest since the 2008 Great Recession. It's from Reuters. And yeah, this is bad news. Yeah, the credit card debt hits a staggering $1.13 trillion. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Yeah, here's, here's credit card debt. Yeah, I mean, look, credit card debt is bad. I, and I love all these guys, these financial guys, who correctly tell people, first thing you got to do is get out of debt. And don't go into more debt. Personally. Now, in business, and, and when you get to bigger numbers, debt plays a different role. But in for individual people, debt is not good because that's a, it's like a form of enslavement. It, it's a self-imposed enslavement. So don't self-impose it, right? So it seems pretty simple. Now, here's Obama in 2020. Uh, actually, I don't know when this was, he, when he gave this little speech here, but uh, he says that Bitcoin is like everyone walking around with a Swiss bank in their pocket. Yes, correct. <laughs> and we love it. And he basically points out, you know what? Let's listen to this. Let's listen to uh, this guy. The question we now have to ask is if technologically it is possible to make an impenetrable device or system where the encryption is so strong that there's no key, there's no door at all. What mechanisms do we have available to even do simple things like tax enforcement? Because if in fact you can't crack that at all, government can't get in, then everybody's walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. Yeah, so basically he wants, think about it, he, what he wants is the government to be able to not only tax you and all that, and know, but they want to know what you're doing financially, and they want to be able to turn it off. Think about that. Think about that. Where, where is freedom and liberty? With these absolute cartel members, these authoritarian lizard people, it's insane. All right, here's a video Today, from Guy Swan, the title is The Debt Doesn't Matter. And, of course, that's not true. And he explains in the video why the debt does matter. Basically, people say, oh, the debt doesn't matter. And he's sort of explaining why it does. It's a very good video, 3 minutes, 22 seconds. We're not going to watch it here, but uh, I will link to it. So definitely check that out. It's a good one from Guy Swan. This guy, I don't even want to play this again, but this guy, basically, he's saying that with cash... When people use cash, the government can't really track it very well. And so what he's saying is the CBDCs are so great because now they're going to be able to track everything you do, every tiny little thing you do. So whenever there comes a vote for CBDCs, which stands for Central Bank Digital Currencies, we all vote no. We don't want it. We're not doing it. Sorry. Thank you. Drive through. Um, now, here's a little post from the Fern Plant Shop says, wow, Zeus point of sale integration with Square terminals and inventory man management worked flawlessly. So these guys are selling plants from a plant shop with using Bitcoin, using Zeus point of sale integration. Zeus is an app. And so they have a little point of sale where people can pay, you know, buy stuff with Bitcoin. And uh, it says, can't believe how easy it was to set up to take lightning payments in our retail shops. This will allow us to easily train staff on how to accept Bitcoin. Incredible work. Yeah, so the adoption's coming, right? Isn't this exciting? You know what's what else is exciting is Bitcoin 2024, July 25th to 27th in Nashville. I hope you're going. Uh, also, Nunchuck is an app. It's a Bitcoin app, and it, it's a Bitcoin multi-sig wallet. And anyway, they have a bunch of updates, but it's a cool wallet. Uh, check it out. Even uh, BTC Sessions did a good video about Nunchuck. And this is about Albi. Now, 
Albi is very happy with this integration with Start9. Start9 has integrated NWC into their Start OS. So yeah, NWC stands for Noster Wallet Connect. So now the Start9 servers, which is like a Raspberry Pi server, but using Start Start OS operating system, which, uh, yeah, I actually have one. They're awesome. They're really awesome. But now it's going to be uh, integrating Noster Wallet Connect. And, and it, anyway, look, there's so much development happening. It's exciting. This is our website, fractalbitcoin.com. And if you click the link on the top, join our locals community. You'll come over here to our locals. You'll be able to hang out and chat with us. It's a really great community. And don't forget, on Fridays, we do the Bitcoin panel. Oh, this is awesome. 4 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. We do it for about an hour, so it's not too long, but it's really packed with awesome people. And I just uh, want to thank, I'm not going to name them because, uh, but anyway, I got a huge zap on Noster today for the show. So don't forget, this is another way you can support the show is to zap my posts on Noster and the Fractal Bitcoin account. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe and follow the channel and, and like the video and all that, please do. Uh, and if you want, please comment. I, I always love to hear you from you guys in the comments, even you trolls, because you trolls don't bother me at all. You're coming around, you trolls. I'm planting seeds. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.